YouTube, welcome back. This session, we're going to be looking at blockchain and what the technology is, how it works, and what problem it's trying to solve. Most famously, blockchain is used within Bitcoin, the digital cryptocurrency, um, to provide security and an audit trail uh, within that to make sure that every transaction that occurs, people know what's going on. It has many other uses, of course, um, within a wide variety of fields, but basically anywhere where we need to be absolutely sure that all of the data that we have is correct. The first thing to do is to have a look at an example of where blockchain could be applied to give us an understanding of why we might want to use it. Consider two people. They exist and one wants to give the other some money. Like this. They could obviously just hand over the money to them and that would be fine. Consider a situation where there are repeated payments over time or lots of payments in one go. We might want to keep a, a note of these now we could do that by, by each person having a ledger of their own or a book where they just write down each of the transactions that comes in. And that would be fine and that works in most situations where this occurs, where there's physical things transacting. And that's great when each of the ledgers agrees with each other, they both contain the same information. However, when they don't contain the same information, a dispute arises and then they have to drill down into all of the transactions and find out what happened. For instance, person one may have actually not given the money, but said that they did. And that has resulted in this dispute where person two hasn't got the money, but person one is insistent that they have. One possible solution is to have a centralized source of the information where one person hands over some money and then the second person acknowledges receiving it. And you've got one single point of where that information is. That's great when it agrees. However, again, you could have person one saying they've sent the money person two hasn't actually received it. Where blockchain comes in is it allows multiple repositories and you physically pass the money in this case or any other information through the server itself. Now this is a rather simplified version but what it means is that person two can't receive the money the person one sent without it having been recorded. So the entire transaction end-to-end -end is recorded and what that means is that both the servers at the top or nodes as they're called in blockchain contain all of the information of all of the transactions that have gone through, um, which means that nothing can ever get lost. and You always have a record of all that information. When you want to send some money, you have to contact the node, say that you're going to send the money. And first of all, the node checks that they both already agree. So the new transaction isn't going to disrupt what could already be a corrupted set of information. When that's agreed, you send the money through and it appears on the other side. But at this point, both nodes, which could be in two physically different locations, agree on where the money is. Expanding this out, it means that any number of people can have nodes uh, and access to, to the ledger as it is, and they all agree. So all four of the servers in the middle of this diagram would all have exactly the same information on. When anything needs to change, for instance, when person one is sending person two some money, all of the transactions are recorded on all of the nodes in between. This means that no one person is responsible for having the information and making sure that it's up to date, and every node has to agree before the data can exist. In this system, every node has the same information on, meaning that every person is aware of every transaction that goes on, and anyone can drill down into their own node to see the list of transactions that's occurred. This is what's called a distributed ledger. It means it's exactly the same ledger, and exists in multiple locations, could be different physical locations, and it means that every transaction can be scrutinized by any party that has access to the node. But they all agree there's no problem. It's actually physically impossible to send some money through node 1 and have it appear at node 4 without all of the nodes in the middle agreeing that that's what's happened, and that's exactly how the system occurs. This, of course, doesn't have to just apply to money. It could apply to data. So anywhere where the information needs to be audited or something has been changed within the system, could be system administrations, a list of logins or things like that. And that could exist as well. So you could, for instance, go to log into a system. It would contact a node. It would contact all the other nodes and say, this person is trying to log in. At which point the nodes can say, yes, we all agree on the current information. And so that is totally fine to let that person in. It then records that into the ledger and distributes that around. Many new and novel use case situations for blockchain technology are being created every day, meaning that uh, this sort of technology could be used for any number of applications. It doesn't have to just be money. I focused on money because that's the easiest transaction to understand. Um, but anywhere that needs data that has to be integral at all times, 
um, but is on several sites where trust is very important between them. In many ways, this removes the need for trusting people at the other location because they can simply check the ledger and see all of the transactions. It means everything's open and everything can be seen. Now, the information doesn't have to be public. You don't have to allow everyone to have access to it. In Bitcoin's case, for instance, it does because everyone is part of the same banking system that created by Bitcoin. So everybody needs to be able to see every transaction that occurs. However, you could keep it private within an organization. You could have different departments within an organization, for instance, and a security or data compliance officer may need to review data that's been changed rather than requiring a lengthy auditing process where they go into the department and track through all of the transactions on one side and, have, and then go into the other department and look at transactions on the other side. They can simply access the ledger and review it all from there without disrupting either of those two departments. If a discrepancy is found, of course, they'll be able to trace it through and see how that happens. Thanks very much for stopping by. Hopefully that's cleared up what blockchain is, how the technology can be applied, and what sort of things you can use it for. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a link in the description below as well as at the end of this video. And if you have any questions about this or any other topic you'd like to see covered, please leave them in the comments. See you next time.